last time. I'm actually surprised that I've been able to clamber up here. TV personality Nick Hewer and social media influencer Scarlett Moffat found the going tough. Can everyone else feel the legs? Because I just genuinely can't feel my right leg. Former England cricketer Monty Panesar shared his faith. Because you guys wanted to come, it's actually opening me up. While actor Louisa Klein was missing hers. I felt uncomfortable. It made me want to go to synagogue. And interior designer Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen and comedian Shazia Mirza found much to ponder on. This is part of the pilgrimage where people repent their sins. I spent an absolute <laughs> fortune on my sins, an enormous amount of effort. I, I'm not going to repent them. The group are about to leave Londonderry, also known as Derry, in Northern Ireland. Slow down, Moffat. I know, what's the matter with this? I know your hip's getting better. It's not. I don't think it <laughs> is. It actually is, it looks as if. Before they continue their journey, they'll be joined by one more pilgrim. Oh my God, can you see him? He looks sparty. I recognise him. Do you? Yeah, I do. Hi, guys. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? You I'm all right? Scarlett. I'm Will. Just got, you are right. just got back from the Paralympics. Oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Sorry I'm late. How did you get on? Silver medal, so I was yeah. happy. Currently ranked number two in the world, Will Bailey is a British table tennis star. Brilliant. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's is this great. your it's first Paralympics? No, fourth. Fourth? Yeah, fourth. So, How many yeah. medals have you picked up at all? Oh, I won a gold in Rio and silver in, in, in Tokyo. So, That's yeah. amazing. Was, yeah, it's really brilliant. Yeah. Oh, well it's done. Cool. How's it been for you guys? It's been crazy the last few days. We missed hell. you. Uh, it's, it's been mad. It's been <laughs> mad. I tell you what, Tokyo will be a walk in the park compared with what oh, we're about to throw at you. I'm, I'm bracing myself for it. I'm bracing myself You'd for it. You need to be. But You've got I'm youth on your cool. side, which yeah, is Yeah, no, it's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to get going. The group are following a number of ancient paths and heritage trails, searching out the footsteps and legacy of St. Columba. From the county of Donegal, over three days, the pilgrims have travelled from Ireland into Northern Ireland and will now make their way along the coast before crossing the North Channel to Scotland. Picking up Columbus Trail, they'll travel into the Highlands. They'll explore the Outer Hebrides, then head south to the Inner Hebrides, finishing at the site of Columbus' most famous monastic settlement on the tiny island of Iona. Over the next two days, the pilgrims will tackle the world-famous Causeway Coast Way as they follow the direction Columba took before leaving Ireland for his historic journey to Scotland. The pilgrims will start today's demanding walk from the harbour town of Port Stewart. Ready to go? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're ready. Raring. We're ready. Raring. But 77-year-old Nick and injured Scarlet are taking a rain check on today's hike. My hip is absolutely killing. And we need to get supplies anyway. Yeah. I'm going to go and get the supplies for us so I'm not lagging. I've got to join her to carry it. It's a bit of disappointment <laughs> for me, as you can imagine. We miss you already. See you, guys. Yeah. Right, now he's got, the, he's got the app. I have. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we're going straight up this road and then we're doing a right. And are we supposed to trust you? The challenging hike on exposed clifftops will take the pilgrims to a bothy, a basic overnight shelter located at the foot of a perilously steep path. That's quite a view. That is gorgeous. Is that the Atlantic there? Yeah. So we're going the right way. Do you feel like you're right on the edge of it, don't you? You do, rather. And the wind's going that way uh -huh. as well. Monty takes the opportunity to get to know fellow sportsman, Will. You've just come out of a competitive tournament, a yeah. global tournament. Yeah. Now you're coming straight into a place like this. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different experience yeah. and the contrast of it. Absolutely. I think it's like, it, it's quite, I think it's quite good for me, to be honest, because it was, it was so full on. You know what it's like. Yeah. Elite sport, you know, it's so intense, isn't it? Yeah. Coming here, like looking yeah. out into sea, like, 
having big open spaces. It's the smell, it's the, it's the wind, it's the, it, it, you know yeah. what I mean? It's the air that makes it feel special. It's, you know? it's, it's like, it's, it's so, it connects your senses, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Religion and faith were a strong presence during Will's childhood. I was born into a Christian family. My granddad was actually a vicar. So when I grew up, it was quite intense, I guess. Prayers before bed, stuff like that. I wouldn't say I'm a Christian, but I'd say that I do believe there's someone up there, if that makes sense. You know, I, I believe that there is someone who looks over me. I think going on the pilgrimage, I'll be able to let myself go a little bit emotionally. I never really dig deep down into myself. I try and like be hard and like unflappable. And I think the pilgrimage, I can find out a bit more about who I actually am, my vulnerability, my fragile side, you know? I think we're going to have to nobble Will. He's far too fast. He's far too fit and healthy. I know. It's we're going to have to like... tie his shoelaces together. That's an athlete's mindset, isn't it? Yeah, mind over matter. Mind over matter, like, you know, look at the positives of everything. That is an amazing view, isn't it? Stunning, isn't it? Back in town, Nick and Scarlett are doing their bit for the team. This is like a weekly shop if we're here one night. Nick, do you want to grab them or do you want me to...? I'll, I'll, I'll carry it. I'll... I'll carry it, it's all right. No, you're the injured one. <laughs> Probably. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And have a good time. Thank you. I'm like a one-man band. <laughs> oh, I'll take a load off. It's a lovely spot, isn't it? Look at that. What's this thing here, this, like, castle? I spoke to uh, the butcher. He said, oh, that used to be a convent. Can you imagine? How many nuns you could cram in there? I have never really? met a real-life nun. Haven't you? When did you catch the religion mug? Um, I think about maybe six or seven years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. What prompt? Did you open your heart? Yeah, I know this sounds really shit, but nice things started happening to me, and I felt like... Gratitude? Yeah, I felt really grateful. Really? Yeah, and I thought, there must be somebody bigger than us that's making this happen. For me, because I was brought up by the stormtroopers of the church, the Jesuits were the stormtroopers. They were rigid, they were highly educated. You didn't mess with the Jesuits. They were deadly serious, and I suppose that stuck with me. Maybe that's why I'm slightly irreligious now. I feel like I'm still trying to search for what faith means to me. You see, I'm going to hell at the moment. <laughs> you're either in or you're out. You're not going to hell. I, well, but I, I do, promise you I am. I, I don't think religion should be just black and white. I just think as long as you have God inside of you, I think God would be happy with that. And anything else is a bonus, I think. Well, you may be right. But, um, you know, you might be up there thinking, yeah, something. Is that Scarlet Moffat? <laughs> get her act together and I'm afraid her influences will suddenly dry up and you look at your numbers one day and you've got three. How would that be? <laughs> to be fair, Jesus only had 12, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> the rest of the pilgrims are making good progress and are taking a break. How did you find that walk, Will? I enjoyed it. Did you? Mm. I mean, it is the first few hours that I've been here, so... But, yeah, it's been really good. I was pretty nervous this morning. I was, yeah, I had my heart... My heart was going a little bit, because I was, like, coming into, you know, a new group of people, so... We couldn't keep up with you. Uh, was... You were storming up there. We were struggling FYI, at the back. can you just slow down, please? Well, no, yeah. yeah. I was, like, trying to keep going, trying to push through and just, like, get it, get it going. We need to slow you down by insisting you yeah. wear all your medals. All your medals. Yeah. Yeah. All your medals. Well, That'll hold you back. Let's crack on. Let's do this. It's tiring now. 
none of the land we're walking on is flat. There's rocks, there's pebbles, it's very rugged and it's really steep uphill and then it's really steep downhill and so that's really difficult. This feels like walking 10 miles in stilettos. After a gruelling four hours, the pilgrims have yet to tackle their final challenge of the day. So this is the path to the Bothy. Irritatingly, Bothies are never anywhere convenient. Take it very slowly. You all right, Will? We've got this. I don't like looking over there. <laughs> don't focus on the precipitous drop. <laughs> I'm scared of heights. Keep looking down where you're treading. Keep your eyes on your feet. Lawrence, bunching. can you hold um, me down this Yeah, you need here. a lot more space between you than this. I'm going to go slowly. Oh my gosh, how steep this is. Try not to look down. Yeah. It feels like we're in the Amazon or something. It does, doesn't it? It doesn't get any easier, kids. OK, now this is a dodgy corner as well. Be careful here. OK. It's a tricky bit. This is amazing. The edge of the world. It is. This is also how a lot of horror movies start, but I don't think we should dwell on that. No. <laughs> Do you know, I'm so looking forward to waking up in the morning. To the sound of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. just us. Yeah. yeah. We will never get the opportunity. What a privilege. It, like, is. it is amazing, isn't it? It's a massive privilege. It shouldn't be called pilgrimage, it should be called privilege. Well, it's got lashings of Shaq Sheik. I just cannot believe such stunning scenery exists in the, in, 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 in the world. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? It's like a fairy tale. Look at this. It's lovely. I wonder if it comes in other colours. It's like Mary Magdalene walking into the tomb and finding Jesus for the first time. This is like a private secret cave. It is rudimentary. Wow. Is these our beds? Uh, it's literally, it's a yoga mat, right? And this yeah. is a blow-up bed. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's for Nick. But maybe the blow-up mats go on the... Hard, hard surface. I don't think this is any softer. Concrete. <laughs> this is a whole L decoration cover shoot waiting to happen, let's face it. Where is the loo? Ah, that's nice. I'll report back. Three kilometres back along the coast. This is beautiful. Nick and Scarlett will be taken to the Bothy by a local boatman. There it is. Where? There. That little thing. <laughs> that little tub. We're going to need a bigger boat. Hello, Skipper. Good afternoon. Ah! Don't, don't, don't sorry, don't sorry. Away. This is the elderly thing on board. That's it. Good. Like a pro. I mean, this is the way to do a pilgrimage, isn't it? <laughs> We're taking one for the team. We are. <laughs> Where's the kettle with the plug? There's no plug, Monty. Well, we got it heated up with a the... gas ring somewhere. Oh, there's no electricity here, is there? No. Oh, this is going to be extremely uncomfortable for me now. These are the beds, aren't they? Yeah. Do we have a air Should you blow them up? I think it's down to your enormous lungs. Are you serious? I am serious. <laughs> <laughs> is it working? It is. This is going to take forever. St. Columba did not do this. Look, it's fine. All right, I'm going to keep going. Just go for it. Whoa, Monty. 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 He's on a mission. Monty. Wow, Monty. Like you're a machine. <laughs> Let's hear it for the sixth form wind band. Oh, not <laughs> <laughs> I think the kettle's spoiled. Yeah. That's magnificent, isn't that is it? That is beautiful. You think we'll all have to sleep in the same room? Yeah. Like kids all rolled up. Is that Scarlett and Nick? Just in time yeah. for two. Uh-huh. 
I can see me going straight in this watery don't when I try do. to get don't out. Don't you dare go in there. Because I've got to tell you, I'm oh, afraid. I'm so clumsy. I'm not coming in after you. That's all I'll right. I'll throw you I, a I've rope. I've got this on. I can swim. Scarlet first, I think. Thank you. I don't like it. <laughs> I got it. You all right? Yep. I see candles. I see candles. Come on. OK. Yay! Yay! What Yay! have you got? Well, we have gifts home. for you. <laughs> we have a lot of liquid gifts for you. Yes. Oh, really? lovely. Anyway, how did you guys get we all, We rolled so down we that hill. So we literally had to climb down from the top there. That was really, really difficult. Yeah. But we need to show you round. Come on. Yeah, yeah. come on, so, come on, have a look. Welcome to uh, Pilgrimage you. Towers. Pilgrimage Towers. Want to carry something for you. Oh, it's all right. You have done all the walking. So this is the dining room, is it? This is the kitchen diner. I genuinely need to say to people, please do not expect too much with one gas ring. This is very great. Not how I do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> we missed you, Nick. We missed did you? you and Scarlett today. No, we, did. we really did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sweet of you. Is that a seal over there? No, I think it's it a is. Boy. Yeah, it's a seal. It's a seal. seal. What's straight ahead of us? Yeah, yeah that that's little a head. Seal. Guys, there's a seal, guys. There's a seal. That's a seal over that's there. That's a seal. Wow. There. No, it isn't. It is. Oh, my word! See its little head. Oh, my gosh. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. He's come to say hello. That's so cute. Look yeah. at He's definitely having a bit of a moment. <laughs> they are having a conversation. Communion. Communion. Thank you, Scott, man. Until the age of 18, Will spent much of his time in hospital having surgery. I was born with a condition called arthrogryphosis, which affects all four of my limbs, like a severe arthritis. When I was seven, I got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a type of cancer. And that's when I actually started playing table tennis in hospital in Great Ormond Street. My grandma came up with the idea of getting me a table tennis table because it was something that I could do whilst I was recovering. And I've played ever since. Life is short. I don't know how long I've got left and I've got to make the most of every second. I want to go and see mountains and water and sun and all these things that make the world amazing. <gasps> I need to get him in now, you know, whilst I got the chance. Over dinner, the group are keen to learn more about their newest pilgrim. Will, you've been parachuted in to join us, and it's wonderful to have you here. Yeah. But we have all declared where we stand in terms of our personal beliefs, our faiths. Oh, going deep. Which religious fence do you sit on? I'm pretty much on the fence. When my granddad died, my mum moved away, and then we never went to church or anything. It was like one extreme to the other. If you I were drowning, think... would you pray to God? Probably. I I've never been in you that were. position, you know, where I've literally been fighting for my life or anything like that, apart from when I was, like, seven years old. And it's different when you're at that age, isn't it? You don't really Wait, you don't know what's going on. what happened when you were seven on. years old? Well, I had non-Hodgkin's blood cancer. I was in Great Ormond Street, so right. like, that, that's when I had people in coming mm. in, praying and stuff like that. It was kind of comforting to know that they were like they cared so much for me, and I'd, I'd like that. I... Do they work? Well, yeah, I'm still here, so I guess it's strange, isn't it? Like when you're in desperate need, you I think you do need a faith or you need something like a god, like because, mm. well, without sounding too morbid, but when you're on, when some your son's on death's door or something, mm. you you, you want to hope that they go somewhere, yeah. or that it's not the end. Mm. Yeah. I've never been in a situation where I've had to pray to God for something negative. I have only ever, like, mm. thank you for mm. what... But like, that's you know, so but powerful it's... because so many people don't do that. When it goes well, they yeah. just take it for granted. Mm. Yeah, but... Lawrence, I wanted to ask you a question. 
since you've been here, you, you've been very theoretical, right? Whenever I'm speaking to you about faith, it doesn't come from your heart. It doesn't. It comes from the mind. But the I completely mind. get that. You, you intellectualize everything. I Whenever do you say anything, it's all coming from the books. It's not coming from no. your personal experience no. and heart. Mm. Yeah. When you had a successful time, did you ever pray to God? Did you ever say to God, thank you for that great deal or something like that? Uh, no. Wrong. I think I'm you can have faith. a very great understanding of faith yes. without having faith. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And I think you can yeah. read as yeah. many books yeah. as you like, yeah. and I'm sure yeah. that Lawrence has read yeah. most of them, mm. but he hasn't got faith. No. I think you have strong faith no, within you, but you just but Monty, don't know it. Monty, but the thing is that, you know, as I said right from the outset, I'm really happy with my mechanical universe. <laughs> Tell me something, you christened your children. Yes. For the purpose that it would be easy for them to then marry. Administratively much Administ easier. Okay. Yeah. You got married yourself in a church? I did, yeah. You yeah, did? Yeah. Why? You know, the, the, the mise-en-scene of getting married, the, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the art direction of getting married, mm -hmm. for me, had to happen in the church. I it's think your, your Christianity really is, is sort of the English middle classes at prayer. It is, rather. <laughs> it's a social thing. It is. We know absolutely everybody yeah, in our village. Too. And we meet at church. I mean, not every Sunday. So why do you go to church? Because we are all there together. And that in itself together. is about it's a certain type of religion. Is a, As I said, it's community. It's community. I don't believe that. I believe you have, inside you, you have strong faith. Oh. As we strip in away the hat, the scarf and everything... The scarf, you can't we're, lose we're the gonna, scarf. But yeah. he says he's really happy the way he is. And I think you need to watch out slightly, Monty. I mean, I'm so fond of you, but one of the big things that we've almost really, really, you know, decided on as a family now is that we all respect each other's faith, but we're not evangelizing. <coughs> no one is trying to sell Converse their anybody. faith yeah. to yeah. anybody yeah. else. Yeah. I think so, I mean, I love yeah. you to death, but you're yeah. not going to find a faith in me. I think there's a difference. And I think Monty grew up with a distinct community, and so did you. But the thing is, I went to a Roman Catholic school. I was the only Muslim in the whole school. Okay. But you're stuck to the culture that you grew up Can with. Can I ask you something? Were you the only person of colour? Yeah. So there was no Hindus, was, there was no... no, no I was uh, the only Muslim and I was the only brown girl in the whole school. And I had to go up every Friday and do Mass, take Holy Communion. Did you the feel different? Yeah. Did you feel oh, different? Amazing. Was it? Mm. And the thing with me is I'm used to being an outsider. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Will, welcome to the Merry Band. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Good Merry to hear you all. Good. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Let's for Will and for Columbus. <laughs> Louisa, I'll sleep next to you. Lovely. It's their final night in Ireland, and the pilgrims bed down together, all sharing a room for the first time. My pillow looks fantastically comfy, doesn't it? I've got a lot of... <laughs> That's not a pillow, it's a hot water bottle. <laughs> it's kind of cosy, actually, you know? Yeah, yeah really cosy. Have you got a pillow? <laughs> sure comfortable. Where did you get the pillow from? <laughs> <laughs> Right, Nick, you're here. I'm here? Yeah, you're here. Oh, Matron. I'm not reading you a story. I'm sleeping with my shoes on because I can run. Where to? Just anywhere. You cannot get Scotland. out of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence, I think it's time to stop talking. Mm. <laughs> right, I'm going to blow the candles out. Good luck, everyone. Night, night. Good night, night, everyone. Good night. <sighs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> 7 a.m. and it's been a long night for the pilgrims. Little bit. Mm -hmm. Not too much. 
What I like about the way he's made the coffee, he's made it a bit like a margarita. He's got kind of coffee <laughs> grounds all the way around the rim, where you'd normally have the salt. <laughs> it's, it's an unusual experience. I think it's quite classy. Shh, he's here. Hi, Will. Is it the worst <laughs> cup of coffee in the world? Did you use seawater? It's, it's awful. It's awful. Sorry. I quite like it, actually. I'm just grateful for some of hot. Yeah, at least. Yeah. <laughs> How did everybody sleep? Awful. Oh. oh, you did you sleep well? No, I didn't sleep. So. Well, we've got oh, really? a, let, let's address the elephant in the room. We've got a couple of snorers, haven't we? Yeah. Well, who's, who was it? Lawrence was 100% sure. You sure. and Nick. Really? Yeah. Now we know. <laughs> like a couple sure. of little roaring rhinos. Were we? Great. Because <laughs> yeah. I moved from the like bedroom area, because mm. you were snoring, and I thought, right, oh, I'll move to the kitchen. And as I laid down, I was like, this is so peaceful, and then Nick started. <laughs> I'm really surprised. I felt like I was in casualty. <laughs> it felt like the A&E department at Withington Hospital. I need yeah. an A&E department. Yeah. <gasps> What's happened? That's what happened. You didn't hear me trip? No. Mm. Crash, bang, I wallop. I got tangled in my sleeping bag and oh. smacked my head into a wall. I'm surprised it didn't wake you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not loving it. Certainly the way woke you're me up. I can it. <laughs> the pilgrims are about to begin the next leg of what would become Columbus' momentous journey. Come on, I think we've got to get going. Let's go. From the Bothy, the pilgrims will leave Northern Ireland by crossing the North Channel, like the sixth century monk, to the Kintyre Peninsula in Western Scotland. Here, they'll continue to search out traces of Columbus' travels. I think that's Scotland over there. I think we can see it cool. straight ahead. This is the journey that Columbus would have taken, and he just took off on a tiny, tiny little boat. And the yeah. sense of such faith he must have had. It takes a lot of courage to do something really, like that. Really, doesn't yeah. it? But he was also saying goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye, Ireland. Goodbye, Ireland for us as well. The chance to spread the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The pilgrims will leave Ireland from the harbour town of Ballycastle. Don't want to leave now, do we, when the sun shines? We're going to get the sun going across, aren't we? I know. We wish you to come aboard. Yeah. Thank you. It's a two and a half hour crossing. Oh, this is nice. The North Channel connects the Irish Sea with the North Atlantic. In 562 AD, Columba and 12 followers made their difficult journey in a small boat made of ox hides stretched over a wicker frame. Columba was traveling to Scotland as a pilgrim for Christ to spread the message of the gospels among the pagan Picts, whose beliefs, it's thought, were based on a devotion to the natural world. This is beautiful. Wow, we're in another country. On to the next adventure then. Thanks very much, mate. Take care, yeah? Cheers, mate. Back on dry land. Oh, I've got jelly legs. Yeah, <laughs> gonna be rocking for a few days. How are your sea legs, Monty? <laughs> very good, actually. Enjoyed that journey, really good. That was quite good, wasn't it? Is this where he actually landed? Yeah, Pintyre is the first place that he set foot when he arrived in Scotland for the first time. What I think is very pertinent now, though, is that Columba has changed enormously. He comes here to spread his message. So he is saying they've got it wrong and he's got it right. He's in business. Yep. Yeah. He's in business as a missionary. Mm. Pretty dangerous, you would think, because they might say, actually, we're very happy where we are. Would you kindly go home? And will you take this black eye with you? When Columba arrived in Scotland, it's said he continued heading north to meet the king of Dalriata, a kingdom that straddled the northeast corner of Ireland and western Scotland. 
The pilgrims also head north, joining the Kintyre Way, a long distance walking route which crisscrosses the length of the peninsula. The scenery is different, isn't it, from Ireland? It's less rugged, yeah. less rough. Wild, less wild, yeah. isn't it? This is steep. <sighs> this is very steep. Come on. Okay. We can do it. Oh. I hope we get to meet some proper Scots. Yeah. I want to meet some proper Scots, some Scottish monks, and eat some shortbread. Go to Loch Ness. I, I want to see find the Loch Ness, Ness monster. monster. That's on the list. I do believe in the Loch Ness monster. Do you? Yeah, I do. But Columba was the first one to see it, apparently. It's, yeah. Yeah. And he wouldn't lie, he's a saint. <laughs> I do a podcast about theories and stuff. About like, what? Like theories. Theories like weird and wonderful stuff. I Give us one of your theories. Go. Well, if you want one of my theories... I want one of your theories. So, um, I believe that hieroglyphics are actually from the future and they're basically just emojis. Because we're getting to the point where our words are getting shorter when we send messages. Sometimes I'll just send a pizza emoji, question mark. My boyfriend knows what I mean. So I reckon the pyramids are actually from the future and it's the hieroglyphics are just emojis. And that's how we talk in the future, because none of us can be asked Do to write. Do you not think hieroglyphics are a little bit more complicated than emojis? <laughs> well, that's why they're from the future, because we're still smart, aren't we? Before Columba arrived, Christianity had already gained followers in the Dalriata kingdom. Keen to trace Columba's footsteps, the pilgrims make tracks for Donard Fort, the stronghold of a king sympathetic to his beliefs. Up to the fort. I honestly don't know if I can, you know. Stay at the bottom. Stay at the bottom. If your hips hurt and just leave it. Rest if it. you do it now and wreck yourself, then that's the rest of no, the that's trip true. done. I'll just stand here for morale. Yeah. And shout, yeah. like, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> to you. Yeah. yeah. Actually, a battle. It's slippy. <sighs> This is actually rock climbing. Nick, can you manage or shall we? Yeah, no, I'm okay. Yeah. If we can do it collectively at a slow pace, great. Oh and then, sure. hang on, yeah, I think we should have Lawrence at the back so that if we all yeah. fall, we'll fall, fall onto on Lawrence. Lawrence. Well, right, listen, go Will's already gone up, so let's go chase Will. Let the spirit of St. Columba be with us and let's get to the top. <laughs> Someone's given them Braveheart May drugs. May the force be with you. Come on, guys. We can do this. Good work, boys. Come on. Oh, my God. Shazia, have you got your sticks on you? Do you want them? I would love them. OK. If you're not going to use them, I'm really grateful. Thank you. It's treacherous. Will is unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you. God, it looks steep, you know. Will, is this hard, this bit? Yeah. It's a bit slippery. Take it steady. Take it steady, mate. OK, mate. Good work. Take this last bit steady. Yes, Will. Got there in the end. Well done, mate. Yay. Wow, it's pretty cool up here. Chelsea, wow. are you feeling I'm OK? A, I'm alive. That's the main sure. thing. I'm alive. Oh. Yeah. But I could be gone with the wind any minute. It was really wet and treacherous. Yeah. That was tough, I've got to tell you. For the elderly, very tough. I'm glad we did it in the driving rain. I'm glad that we got to the top. I do have a little bit of a sort of respiratory problem. Um, and it was tough. But I did it, so that's good. Right, I've got information about yes. it up here. This fort was an important seat of power for the Gaelic kings of the Diariata kingdom between 500 and 800 AD. A carved footprint, size 8, is thought to have been part of a coronation ceremony for the king. This is where great kings were anointed. Wow. Is that, that it? There? There it is. Who's got a size 8? I'm a 7. Yeah, that's about right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's about right. Far off. I think take. it was definitely a flip-flop there. Yeah. Do you think? You're coming to see the footprint. You've just missed Shazia with a foot in it. She's now the new queen of the Gales. 
Oh, really? Perfect for her. It's almost certain that Columba would have come here to establish a relationship with this kingdom. So obviously it was crucial for Columba to come clambering up here to see the king, mm -hmm. to say, I'd like your permission to throw up some monasteries around the, the kingdom. And he's given permission for that. And from that moment on, if the king buys it, mm -hmm. we'll buy it too. Mm -hmm. So it had to be done... Tactically. Mm. Yeah. Tactically. Right, so we're going to go down now? I yeah. know my ankles are totally gone now, so it's going to be interesting getting down. We'll help you down. Everybody needs to be very careful. It was a real challenge because my disability, you know, I've got a severe type of arthritis, so it was like I could feel my legs sort of like burning and I could feel my ankles hurting like every step. St. Colombo must have had so much desire and determination. It was the supportive Dal Riata king who gave Columba the Isle of Iona, where he built his famous monastery. You know what I think's a little bit, like, crazy? That we're seeing stuff with our eyeballs that Columba would have seen with his eyeballs. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It's amazing. Not far from the fort is a famous place of worship for pilgrims in search of St. Columba. On the shores of Loch Kalishbort is a hidden natural cave. According to legend, Columba stayed here for several nights while on his journey to Iona. Today, the pilgrims have a date here with a local Episcopalian priest. I have to say, you look amazing. Oh, yeah. You do look very dapper. Yeah. We have to look beautiful for the Lord. <laughs> we never got the memo. <laughs> Father Simon regularly celebrates communion with passing pilgrims and has invited the group to their own special service. God, this is beautiful. This is amazing. This is like Narnia. The cave's been used by humans since Mesolithic times and by early Christians from at least the 7th century. So welcome to St. Columbus Cave, a place where, as you see, people have prayed and meditated before us. This is an early Christian cross. Pilgrimage is a journey in which we discover truth about ourselves. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blood of Blood of Christ. All oh, right. What is it? Water. Wine. Oh, wine. No, I'm okay. The blood of Christ. It's wine. All oh, right. Red wine. Okay. The blessing in Columbus' tongue. Agus can ro biaunach ye ulohoach kich, and ahar a vich kagas in spirit neuf nermes. Agus gan gaver e koni maliariv do gra. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Yeah. I want to have a look at this crucifix. Yes. That was. I thought it was very moving. It's surreal, isn't it? Yeah, it's surreal. It was a special experience, though. Oh, it yeah. was. I just think you know that was a very deep, spiritual, elevating and peaceful experience. Mm. Yeah, it was. I was thinking, what am I doing with these seven people in a cave in a forest in the middle of nowhere having mass? Yeah. Do you know what I've got to say, right? I, what I found most moving was actually, like, I don't know how it would, but like, obviously you're a Muslim, but you were saying the Lord's Prayer. I know it. And Seriously. I was like, I know it. this is amazing. We're in St. Columbus Cave. I'm looking That's around amazing. and like, I'd, it made me feel closer to you. Every experience I'm having on this journey is solidifying 
my Jewishness, my pride at being Jewish, both culturally, my heritage, and religiously. This is a magical place. This is a very spiritual place. The cave itself is, of course, just magnificent. And um, Father Simon carried off that service with enormous dignity and presence, really. This was a very wonderful service, and one that I shall remember for a long time. Living together as pilgrims is giving the group time to share vulnerabilities and open up about their lives back home. Monty. Are you enjoying the walk-in? Yeah. Yeah? It's hard. It's hard. I'm finding it hard as in, because I'm not physically as fit as I could be, but yeah. I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. Should have got some Botox and I wouldn't be as sweaty. You don't need Botox. But people get Botox so you don't sweat. You can get it in your armpits and on your in your. Oh, mate, I would never palms. do that. Have you got any work done? Or I've you... got fake teeth. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what people like about you, is because you're like natural, you're just yourself. I remember being on the front of a couple of papers yeah. and the front of nearly every glossy magazine yeah. um, saying rhinoplasty surgeon says Scarlett's gone too far about my nose, saying that I look like Michael Jackson and that, it's actually the nose really? that I was born with. And I got to the point where I was searching to see if I could find a surgeon to make my nose bigger. Yeah. What's the matter with people? You must get trolled because yeah. you're, you, you know, you like when you, if you've made a mistake in cricket or yeah, whatever, yeah. like. I used to get trolled all the time about my fielding, about not being athletic, about being a club cricketer, playing for England, and them kind of stuff really got to me and just really put so much pressure on myself to think, you know, do I even deserve playing for England? Oh, do you know Monty. What I mean? You know, there was a comment that Shane Warne made. He said, Monty's played one test match 33 times, and that really affected oh. me a lot. Yeah, I really felt like, don't publicly just annihilate me because the media is going to, British media will pick up on that. Yeah. But then that's what happens when people have opinions Aww. and judgments, you know? <laughs> yeah. After a long day, the pilgrims reach the village of Achachoish and its local church. This is nice. This is beautiful. This is lovely. Wow. It makes me feel safe. The parishioners and Minister David Carruthers often extend hospitality to passing pilgrims, providing a meal and a bed. Welcome to South Knapdale Parish Church. Thank you. You've also come not just to stay here overnight. I know some of you are getting to the point of being very hungry, and there is food up the back for you all. Thank you. Help yourselves. <laughs> You can have anything you like. Thank you. Oh, this looks lovely. I'm going to try a little bit of everything. Lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, the lasagna is lovely. Oh, yes. This mushroom is lovely. Mm. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It feels weird eating in church. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. yeah, like normally just come here for a christening or a wedding. Mm. It's like eating mushroom lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a, a vicar? Yes, I would call myself a minister. Yeah. William's grandfather's vicar. Right. In Dorset. Yeah. Church of England. Yeah. yeah. He died when he was pretty young. Yeah. And my mum kind of like, I think she found it all quite difficult to deal with. And then when we didn't go to church anymore and things like that, she still had the faith, obviously, mm. because when I got really ill, when I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma blood cancer. Right. I felt that she leant back on that. So it's strange, isn't it, how mm. you can kind of like dismiss it, but then when you need it, you're like, I need it, I actually yeah. need well, it. I, well, Columba actually wrote a prayer along those lines. And the prayer is, the child of God can fear no ill, his chosen dread no foe. We leave our fate with thee and wait, thy bidding when to go. And there is that notion that once you start trusting, believing, recognising, mm. discovering God, that he is actually more part of life than we ever give him credit for. Yeah, 
I mean, that, that actually got me quite emotional because it actually took me back from when I was like just in, in the hospital and my grandma came and, and I, remember, I remember her complete faith in her saying, don't be scared, that what was going to happen to me was going to be fine and that gave me comfort as well. I remember that now. Yeah. And I felt that comfort. Yeah. <laughs> In true pilgrim tradition, the group will be sleeping overnight in the church, amongst the pews. So we'll now discover whether I've got wet feet. And the answer is yes, I have. That's a disappointment. Alone for the night, the pilgrims reflect on their evening. I mean, this was incredibly generous, kind, open. The food was delicious. The people were very, very kind. When he just came out with that prayer, like out of the blue, it hit me like a like a train. It took me back to the time when I was ill. Maybe it wasn't God, maybe it was, but maybe the, the prayer and the belief that that sure. the energy helped me. Truly yeah. extraordinary. All I know is that it made me feel safe. That's that's what was important to me. Sometimes Isn't I think it? when you see other people's strength of their faith, it gives you a security, whether you believe it yourself or not. It's weird, isn't it? Sleeping in a church. Yeah. This day, you know, this but I actually feel like it's quite peaceful. <laughs> Don't go sliding onto me. <laughs> hey, my sleeping bag's wet. Is yours? Yeah. yeah. Three in the bed, and the little <laughs> one said, Roll over! Roll over! <laughs> hey, everyone. It's another early start for the pilgrims. There was an orchestra of snoring going on all night. It was really well orchestrated. I think it's the acoustics as well. So you joined me in the business class flatbed yes. cabin. It was quite peaceful up there. I've got used to being a bit damp all the time. <laughs> I think it'll be weed when I go home and I'm dry. <laughs> lead on, Monte, lead yes, on. Yes, I am. From the church, the pilgrims travel further north into the Scottish Highlands. In Columbus' day, it was known as Pictland and was mostly pagan territory. Eventually, it said, Columba travelled through the highlands on his way to meet the king of the Picts. The pilgrims are following the Great Glen Way, a walking trail which will take them to Loch Ness, thought to have been one of Columba's stop-off points. I've decided to let the chatterboxes go ahead. Well, actually, not so much allowing them to go ahead as not being able to keep up with them, but that's a good thing. So let the children chatter and I'll have a contemplative hike. Did you go into teaching because you were nervous about committing to stand-up no, comedy? I've never been to a stand-up comedy club in my life before right. I started stand-up. My really? first gig was the, first, the time first time in a comedy club. My first five minutes was about my moustache okay. and about how I bleached it and being a hairy woman. And that just went down such a storm yeah. that everyone said, oh, you must carry on. So within the community, mm. if you were to go to mosque or something like that, how do people react to you? Well, they never say anything to my face. OK. But um, people have gone up to my mother in the mosque right. and said things to my mum. Yeah, like what? Like, oh, you know, do you know what your daughter says on stage? You know she does jokes about you. Yeah. And I get angry about that because I chose to do what I want to yeah. do. I don't yeah. want my mum to get abused, no. especially in the mosque. I actually don't do much religious material anymore. I talk about my own personal life. Right. Us seven on this yeah. pilgrimage here, we've had such a laugh. We really have, haven't and, we? And it's been nothing to do with race, nothing to do with religion. 
It's just us individuals. Yeah. How we connect as people. Yeah. The weather in the Highlands can change quickly, and mid-afternoon, it takes a turn for the worse. I am drenched. I'm cold. Yeah, really. I don't mind getting wet, but I'm cold now. That's it now. Will looks like a pantomime horse. We can't get any wet here. We may as well enjoy it. <laughs> you look like a camel. Do you just do go out a long way at the back? This is grim. Oh, my God. This is a low point. Yeah. Soaked to the skin, the pilgrims finally arrive at their hostel for the night. Go on, you go in first. Set on the banks of Loch Ness. 36 kilometres long, almost three kilometres wide, it's the largest body of freshwater in the UK. It's also home to the infamous Loch Ness Monster and the source of a popular story about Columba. Hello. How's it going, all right? Yeah, yeah, it was so wet. Have you got a room for the girls? We do, yes. You girls can be upstairs in room 16. OK. okay. All right, so the boys are going through the other door. Uh, around to the left is room three. Room three, guys. Yeah. That's room two. Or, as we like to call it, the doudoir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at the view. Oh, my god. Oh, wow. That's unreal. You can see right up the lock here. Shazia, Lawrence and Monty head down to the loch to explore the settings of Columba's oft-told exploits with the Loch Ness Monster. Be careful here, the rocks are wet. There's a man swimming in the loch. Oh, yeah. Hello, sir. It's freezing cold. Have you seen the Loch Ness Monster? Thankfully not, otherwise I wouldn't still be coming in here. Right, OK. <laughs> the story of Columba and the monster dates back to a book written a century after the saint's death. The legend goes that Columba saw a group of local people burying a man who has been killed by the water beast. And Columba then ordered one of his companions to swim across the water. See, I'd do that. I wouldn't <laughs> Would go you? myself. His follower didn't hesitate and jumped in the water and the monster went to attack him, but when Columba made the sign of the cross, he shouted the name of God, the beast fled. Never to be seen again. Until, kind of like the Victorian period, when tourism in the area was really needing a bit of a boost. So they went back to the records and they found this story of the water beastie and they thought, ooh. But I, I want to know if anybody has seen it since. <sighs> Have they? We don't know that. No, 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 there have been plenty since. He was the first to see it. First time on record. I think you know? these stories attach themselves to Columbo because it suits him and it yes. suits the story. And it's like, oh, my Too God, right. Columbo, yeah. this mystical, yeah, mystical yeah, yeah. person. Oh, the story of the Loch Ness yeah. Monster, that suits him. Tonight, Louisa is volunteering to make a Jewish Friday night dinner for her pilgrim family. We've had such extraordinary experiences this last week of so many different places we've been and places we've slept. So I think it'd be a really nice end to the week. Doesn't this look lovely? Amazing. This is the first time we've had a really homey experience. <laughs> <sighs> oh, wonderful. Well, it's my first Jewish dinner. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, yeah, And here she is, the Hello. mama. Yay! Welcome. Thank you so much. I feel nervous. I feel like we've all had to, like, put our religions to, to the others and now it's the Jews' turn. So I have decided <laughs> to do it with three food. And what we do on a Friday night is, as the sun is going down, the Shabbos comes in, Shabbat comes in, which is the beginning of 24 hours of a day of rest. So we would light the candles and I would say the prayer for the candles, the bracha for the candles, and it goes, Baruch atah Adonai eleheinu melech olem, asher kiddishanu b'mitzvah tov v'etzivanu lahad likneh shal Shabbos. And then you go like this and you welcome in the Shabbos, you bring in the light into your house. This is a joy. Isn't it lovely? It is, and then, it is special. This is, actually makes us feel like we're a family. Not yes, it does. Yeah. You see, this is what it's about. Mm. This is all it's about. So then I hit. Yeah, OK. And then what I do is I break a bit off for you. Yeah. Thank you. Break a bit off for you. Thank you very much. And you break off the bread. And it's essentially you're thanking God 
for the food, for the drink, and for the thanks so much for the day. Well, I'd just like to say thank you for sharing this with me. It's really, really special. Thank you. And I feel really honoured to be able to share it with you. Well, on behalf of six very homesick pilgrims, no. it's what a lovely thing to thank do. You. Thank you. Lachaim. Lachaim. Good Shabbos, everybody. Good, Good Shabbos. 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 Yes. Next time, there's discord in the merry band. Me and Will found no, that really that's not condescending. What I said. Just because we didn't go to a posh school. That's absolutely not what I said. But I think no, I think no, so. Monty, please. Faith starts to move in mysterious ways. Left and then right. How do you think you're faring in Islam? Do you think you could have a foot in it somewhere? <laughs> I'm still thinking. Nick Ahmed Mohammed Hewa. And the pilgrims reach their final destination all the ups and downs that we've had just makes it more special to be here. Yay! The pin has dropped. This is Iona, and that is where Columba was laid to rest. And you can watch all episodes right now on BBC iPlayer.